Welcome to Sandy Hook at the American Highlands. Located on a thin peninsula that extends into Lower New York Harbor, the Sandy Hook Unit of Gateway Rec National Recreation Area is a park that draws more than 2 million visitors annually. Originally discovered by the famous sea captain Henry Hudson in the early 1600s, Sandy Hook, which is operated by the National Park Service, remains a beautiful 2,044-acre barrier peninsula and is within view of the Manhattan skyline. Sandy Hook has expansive ocean and bay beaches for swimming, fishing, picnicking, scuba diving, surfing, windsurfing, bicycling, and rollerblading. For nature lovers, the park has expansive hiking trails, bike paths, salt marshes, and a spectacular American holly forest, and more than 300 species of birds like the piping plover, the black skimmer, and osprey. The National Park Service took over most of the 2044-acre peninsula in 1975. After, after the U.S. Army deactivated Fort Hancock. Within the fort, which serves as an active military installation from 1874 to 1975, is the Sandy Hook Lighthouse. Built in 1764 to help reduce shipwrecks, is the oldest operating lighthouse in America and a National Historic Landmark. The primary mission of the fort was the defense of New York Harbor. Over the years, a large number of weapons were installed, including large mortars and artillery and in later years, Nike anti-aircraft missiles, which were installed to protect the greater metropolitan area. From 1874 to 1919, Sandy Hook also served as the U.S. Army's first proving ground for testing new weapons. What does that sign say? Beach closed. <sighs> that stinks. Does stink really bad. I wish we could have all been on this field trip. But I'm here to give you a virtual guide of what we would be seeing on the trip itself. At this point in the field trip, we would have been walking along the beaches and gathering shells. Collecting shells is one of my favorite pastimes as a kid coming to the beach. I still even love doing it now as an adult going up and down the beach uh, collecting shells. The point of this is so you can become familiar with some of the shells that you may see here over at the Jersey Shore and to help you decide which is a moon snail and which is a mud snail. Or even when you're walking along the beach and something ca shiny catches your eye and you wanna know what it is. Well, look no further. Here's a guide to some of the most common shells found on New Jersey beaches. Ever wonder why you see shells that have these holes in them? This is a result to the hungry moon snail. Moon snails release an acid into the shells of clams and other snails to soften the shell. Then they drill a borehole into the shell with a tooth tongue to feed off the meat in the victim. Sometimes you can see the same shell but in a different color. The black base scallop that you see isn't naturally that color and neither is that brown Atlantic surf clam. Shells stain brown or orange got that way because of iron oxide forming along the microscopic cavities of dead mollusks. Up to 30% of the shells on New Jersey beaches will be brown. Black stained shells are pretty cool. Um, they've been buried in the mud for hundreds, if not thousands of years. They make their way to the beach after being dug up by dredging. With so many beach replenishment projects along the Jersey shore, we're bound to find a lot of black stained scallops, oysters, and clamshells. You may find shells or rocks that have 
holes in them, like little boring holes. If you find a shell or a rock with tunnel holes in it, you may think it resembles a sponge. Well, that's because these holes were made by a boring sponge, drilling holes into shells for the calcium. The designs left on the shells as a result can be quite pretty and interesting. When is crab not actually a crab? When it's a horseshoe crab, <laughs> one of the endangered species here in New Jersey. While they may resemble crustaceans, they're actually closely related to anacrids. Oh, yep, scorpions, spiders, and ticks. They're often referred to as living fossils, as they existed more than 445 million years ago. That's 200 million years before dinosaurs existed. The knobbed whelk is the official state shell in New Jersey. Knobs, some more pronounced than others, form around the spire, giving it its name. Here's your common slipper shell, or oyster pest. The common slipper shell gets its name from its appearance. It looks like a slipper. Uh, these animals are often found in chains of up to 12, uh, attached to mussels or oysters. They start out as males and turn into females as they grow larger. Here's a blue mussel. The outside of the blue mussel shell is dark blue or black in color. The inside is often a shimmery white with dark purple borders. Both halves of its bivalve are often found intact on beaches near inlets. A bivalve is if I were to have both pieces of the shell. I only have one piece of the shell. Bivalve would be attached here and it would be two. But on the inlet to the Jersey Shore, not so much the Jersey Shore, but here right in Sandy Hook on the bay side, these are very common. Here you have the false angel wing. False angel wing gets its name from its appearance. When both shells of its bivalve are intact, the patterns of ridges and ribs make them look like angel wings. A three-line mud snail. The shell of the three-line mud snail has a spindle shape as well as distinct lines and ribs that give it a bead-like texture. Almost looks like jewelry. Next, you have the Atlantic surf clam. One of the most common found shells on New Jersey peaches and easily recognizable by its large size and oval triangular shape. You can see these in very large quantities at the Jersey Shore. If you can't find them on the beach, best time to wait is at low tide. When you go into the water, find hundreds of them in a day. The Coquina. These are little clams that you often see burrowing back into the sand. Uh, in large groups after a wave crashes ashore. Uh, coquinas come in various colors, from almost white, yellow, pink, orange, red, purple, to brownish and bluish, and have darker rays on the inside of the shell. What's that you hear? Jingle shells. Jingle shells, a common jingle shell gets its name from the sound it makes. Uh, just pick up a few of them, in your hand and shake them so you can hear that little jingle. This shell is very thin and brittle. The shell, it's very shiny and it's nice when they're washed up along the shore uh, when the sun hits them. It's a nice golden color. Probably one of my favorite shells to collect, it's the base scallop. Uh, the base scallop has a fan-shaped shell with approximately 20 ribs. Its natural color being more of a dark red. Uh, why is a base scallop shell find on the ocean side beaches? Because of dredging. Uh, dredging and beach replenishment are among the most common reasons why you find these on the ocean side and not on the base side. You have the sea scallop, much larger than the base scallop. The ski scallop has a large, flat, fan like shape. On the inside of the shell is very glossy, white, with a muscular scar where the scallop was formerly attached. You may also find a mermaid's purse. You might come across one of these on the beach and just think it's another type of seaweed. But it's actually the egg case of a skate. A skate is a fish that resembles a stingray, and they're actually part of the same family. If you find a fresh unhatched pod, you could hold it underneath a light. 
The best light to use is probably your LED from your phone so you can see the fish embryo inside. Next up, I have a shark eye. The shark eye is a type of moon snail and it has a dark eye at the tip of its spire. And when you look at the other end of it, it is closed off. This is the northern moon snail. The northern moon snail can easily be differentiated from the similar shark eye by the uncovered hole at the center. The shark eye has a patch of its shell covering a hole. So here's the northern moon snail and here's the shark eye. Uncovered hole, moon shell, covered hole, shark eye. All right, so now we need to walk over to our next destination. But before that, we need to take a quiz. If you have any questions, message me through Canvas. Hope this is somewhat enjoyable for you all. Peace out.